Let's all stand up. Father, we thank you, Lord God, because this is, this is, Lord God, your place. And this is your time. And in your time, all things are beautiful. We thank you, Lord God, that we are nowhere else but here to hear, Lord God, your powerful word, the life-changing, all-powerful, Lord God, word, not for you, but for us, because we desperately need it. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> now, before I begin, today is uh, actually a, a, a prayer for the Jerusalem, Israel uh, time. Now, before I, I, I do that, uh, Christianity came from Judaism. We know that, right? Hindi po galing sa Manila yon Or binili sa somewhere. Christianity came from Judaism. Jesus was a Jew. And the first apostles, the disciples, were all Jews. And our Bible, the Old Testament, is Jewish. And so we owe it to them because the Jews have Bible. Salvation comes from the Jews. The revelation of God comes from them. Although it was God who revealed. So we owe it to them. There are two peoples in the world. Meron po yung the Gentiles, kayo po yon at ako. At meron po yung Jews. One day we will all come together. But in the meantime, the Lord wanted us to pray for Jerusalem. Okay? And you can see, ang sabi po sa Bible, one day, darating panahon, that Jerusalem will become a heavy burden for the world. I mean, for there are, there are cities in this world that are known, but there is not one city in the world that becomes an issue for every nation in the world. It's Jerusalem. Jerusalem, papunta ka, puro bato lang yun. Pupunta si pastor nga sa Israel, makikita niya mga bato na tutukoy ko. It's dry. It's, Jerusalem has no... Has no uh, well, they, they do have a little bit of that. Has no gold. For people to fight for. They have no oil for people to fight for. Wala silang mining or anything. It's just a place where nations have been building up on top of one another, previous uh, uh, buildings. And yet, the world is heavy over this. Because it's the city of God. I mean, hindi yung, pumunta tayo doon kasi may langis pag labanan natin. Pumunta tayo doon, dalaman naman ginto. Wala. Wala kang makukuha ginto. Walang langis doon. Wala anything. Pati pagkain, hindi masarap. <laughs> For me. Because I've been there. You know. Uh, puro kambing at saka tupa. <laughs> so, uh, I won't fight for that. But God said we should pray for them. Amen? Because they are our brothers. They are our sisters. And they need the revelation of the Lord. So let's pray for them. Let's we'll stand up one more time and, and do this. This is, this is us. Because they rejected Jesus, we found Jesus. Amen. Okay? But one day, sabi ni Paul, they will find Jesus as well. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, of all the nations you chose, Lord God, your people, the Jews, Israel, to reveal yourself. We thank you, Lord God, that you are not hiding yourself. You said, Lord God, in your book in Isaiah, one day a people who do not know me will find me. The people who are not looking for me will find me. And he said, but you, you know me, you are hard-headed. Lord, you're talking about the Jews today, Lord God. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name as they celebrate, Lord God, their, their, their feasts, that you may be revealed to them in Jesus' name. Because there is no peace in Jerusalem until the Son of God which is the Prince of Peace, will be known. We don't just pray for the Jews today, Lord God, but we pray for the Arabs as well. For the Palestinians and for the Christians there, Lord God. And even for the atheists in that place. Because they are walking in the city of God and they have no idea. God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will take out the veil so that they might know the real peace. The peace that you came here for, not for the world, but for man to have peace with God. In Jesus' name, let the revelation, Lord God, sit strong in their hearts. We pray, Father God, that the strife in the Middle East may stop. In Jesus' name. And may you be known, Lord God, as the God of gods and the Lord of lords, just as you are. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Today, let me be seated. I, Alamo, today would be, before I start, if you have, if you have things to remind yourself, I think this is the day that you should write down. Today is October 8th, is it? Nine. Oh my gosh. Do not write down 8. October 9. 
I have been in prayer and uh, it will be powerful today. You have to remember this day. And, and you will always look back and say something happened that day, that Sunday, October 9. In Daniel chapter 9, Daniel probably was uh, around 70 years, uh, uh, well, over 70 years old, around 83 years old. He looked back, he looked at the book, and he said, you know, it's almost, it's already 70 years. Bakit kami pa bihag pa rin? Because there was a prophecy of Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, you will be taken captive to Babylon, and you will be there for 70 years. After 70 years, I will restore you back. So the, for, among the people who were, who were captives, who were exiled to Babylon, was, was Daniel. Bata pa siya, mga 14 anos siguro siya, or 13 or 14 years old. Because he's one of those smart guys. So he, he was brought over there. Remember, they changed his name into what? Pepe. Pepe. Belteshazzar, right? The, 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 uh, uh, the god of Bel. Oh, no. I forgot the word meaning of Belteshazzar. Along with his two, three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, he knew the prophecy 70 years. So when he was counting, he realized, Matanda na ako. Asan yung pangako ng Panginoon? I'm already old, and it's already 70 years since the exile. Where is the promise? You know? Where is the promise? In fact, wala na nga si Nebuchadnezzar eh. Nabago na yung hari. Wala na nga yung Babylonian kingdom. Kundi Middle Persian na, nagbago na. Nakailang election na. May election para rin. And it's already year 538. And where is the promise of God? Don't you even ask you that, yourself about that? Akala ko sabi ni Lord, ganito eh, bakit? Hanggang ngayon, ganun pa rin. Did you ever ask you that? I saw, yung pinag-usapan namin sa Bible study, ganito mangyayari, you know, we celebrate and everything, and yet, I look at myself, it's still the same. <clears throat> that was the same question about Daniel. 70 years is almost over. It's actually over. And he was probably around 83 years old. Wala pa rin nangyayari. But if you would look at the story, the Bible said there was an angel sent to answer his prayer. And, and the angel said, Daniel, the moment you humbled yourself to seek the Lord and pray, an answer was sent immediately. But for some reason, it was delayed. So it, the, problem, the problem was not with God, but there was an issue whereby yung, yung delivery system was apprehended. And we know now that the demon caught the angel and Archangel Michael has to come and release him so that he can give the answer to Daniel. But regardless... The 70 years is indeed over, but the realization of the promise was delayed because of some demonic activity. Now, there are, let me tell you this, that's why I want you to mark on October 9. I was uh, meditating and the Lord said, well, I asked him, Lord, why is it that today I have to declare this? Why not on other days? What's with October 9? And then he showed me two things, which is very interesting. I don't know the Bible, you know, in, in the time of God, all things are beautiful. In fact, in the time of God, when you look at yourself, you're so beautiful. <laughs> in his time, he makes all things beautiful. Now, today is the time of God, and, and it's powerful because I, I didn't realize this. I wasn't even thinking about it. And then the Lord said, why don't you look at the, cal- the Jewish calendar? Did you know that the, there are, there, we have our own secular calendar. We start every what? January. January 1st will be 2017. But the Jewish calendar started last week. It starts in Rosh Hashanah. Rosh meaning the head of the year. It started in Rosh Hashanah. And 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is on Tuesday. Very high holidays. Is what they call the days of awe. Ngayon, yung Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement. For, for the Jews, it's a, it's a time of, of reflecting. For us, it's a time whereby everything is sealed because of the atonement of Jesus Christ. Now, I was, I was thinking, Lord, why today? Why today? Why today? This is what he said. Because our church, first of all, let me tell you, what is the declaration? There are two things that we are about to declare here. That there will be things 
that you've been going through in your life that will not cross over to the next year. Tagalogin ko. Tulog pa Yes! Merong nag There are things in our life that you've been carrying with you and you don't wish to carry it with you. God is saying it will not be carried over into your new year. And this was my struggle. What's up with October 9? There are things in your life that you don't have, that you wish to have, will come to you and you will carry it with you in the new year. The things that you don't like will stay and the things that you should have will come. Daniel said, I, tumanda na ako. I have grown old. Where is the promise? God is saying today. When the, the days of all, which is from, from a Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, the days of all are the days whereby they actually sit down and do an accounting of their lives. You know, what, what happened to my life? Every year they do this. In fact, every year, the Jews, this is what they do. They, give, uh, they become generous. Papagbigay sila. They remember their enemies and forgive because they don't want to go over next year with an enemy, which is a good thing, amen? And then they look at their debts. They make sure that they pay off their debts before they go into their next year. These are the things that they do in the days of war. And tradition says during the 10 days from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, the Ark of the Covenant is open. The Ark of the Covenant is open and they pray and they believe in the 10 days, the 10 days of awe during Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur are the days whereby the gates of heaven are open. And they believe that during these 10 days, whatever you do, <clears throat> so you better, uh, parang, you better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Because <laughs> Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur is here. This is where they actually try to behave as much as they could because Rosh Hashanah is the year whereby they greet, this is the greeting for they have in Rosh Hashanah. The greeting is uh, uh, Shana Tova, meaning may you have a good year. And then the greeting in Yom Kippur is this. Gamar Hatiba Tova, meaning may you be sealed in the book of life. Meaning, if you put them together, they believe that in Rosh Hashanah, as the new year comes, the Lord writes down things that will happen to you next year. Now, whatever you do in the 10 days before Yom Kippur will either make it happen or not. That's why they're wishing that it may be sealed. And in Yom Kippur, the great thing is Gamar Hatima Tova, meaning may it happen what the Lord wrote down to you in this year. Now, these are all traditions. I'm not saying we're doing that. Kaya nga, when the Yom Kippur comes, meron silang ginagawang, they, to seal whatever it is that they believe in, they get a chicken and slaughter it. Because they don't have a temple to slaughter your sheep anymore. And so the, uh, the uh, people for the ethical treatment of animals are after them. Oh. All right. Or Popeye chicken. Because that's how they do it. They shake this chicken over the heads of their children, you know, try to steal what they will promise they have. But we have a greater sacrifice, which is Jesus. Amen. His atoning sacrifice sealed everything. We don't have to like, oh, let me, let me take a stock of my life. I'll give more in my tithes and offering. I'll do this and do that because the heaven is open in 10 days only. The heaven is open 365 a day to you. Amen. He never closed it. Amen. Praise God. But then there's something important about the calendar this year for us as a church. The Lord is saying this is the year. This is the day before you cross over, that whatever you've been carrying with you for the past years will stay. It will not make it over. The Lord has put a spiritual TSA. A spiritual TSA. He will look at your baggage and say, these are illegal, it will not cross over. Because they're not part of the plan of God. And then they will be saying, there are lost baggages here and your name has, and your name is in it. Take it with you. And let's look at that. While we're worshiping earlier, the title of my message is Je- Jehovah. Somebody say what that means. But how do you say that? Je- Jehovah Sabadu. <laughs> Jehovah Sabaoth. We had a song earlier. The Lord is what? The God, the Lord of angel armies. That's what it means. Jehovah Sabaoth. 
This is the name of